All right, I've got two Zoologist perfumes fragrances to talk to you about today. Both of them are created by Prin Lomros, who has his own brands. Those are Sloth and Bat 2020. Now, I know that uh, Koala is launched, but I'm a little behind in reviewing fragrances for you today. So I'm going to tell you about these two fragrances and what I think about them. And you're going to have a chance at winning a discovery set of Zoologist perfumes fragrances to subscribers of this channel from the USA and Europe. So if you're curious to learn about these two fragrances, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. That's right, today we're talking about Sloth and Bat 2020. Uh, the last review I did for Zoologist Perfumes was for B, which still happens to be my favorite fragrance. But I'm always curious to learn about other animals and how the fragrances turn out. So today, as I said, we're talking about Sloth and Bat 2020. But before we do that, if this is your first time tuning into this channel and you still haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So I just want to say that these two fragrances were sent to me, but the opinion's all my own. And I'm giving you my honest opinion about these fragrances. And as I said, my favorite fragrance from Zoologist Perfumes is still be, but I'm actually really enjoying how Sloth smells, but Bat is still not one of my favorite offerings. So these are both 2020 launches. The perfumer, as I said, is Prin Lomros. If you're curious to watch any videos that I've done for this particular perfumer with his different brands, you can just search his name on this channel and you can find among this video and others. These two are sold for $165 for 60 ml bottles. And these are Extrait de Parfum concentration, meaning the highest concentration of perfume oils. So they are long, long lasting. So the first fragrance, Sloth, is one of my favorite animals actually. This animal is so cute. And if you ever watch that Disney film, I think it's called Zootopia. There was a scene with uh, the DMV uh, sloth workers. That scene is really, really funny. But I, I feel like even though the, the sloth is a very slow animal, this is not slow at all. The way this fragrance works is so fast and intense. I mean, I guess I, I think of speed and intensity being about the same, and it's an, a very, very intense fragrance. In fact, what I want to say is the two fragrances side by side, sloth pretty much uh, takes over however Bat 2020 smells on me. Sloth just dominates. It's so strong and so potent. Uh, and uh, if you like those kind of fragrances, this is one that you should definitely check out. But you gotta love chamomile because for me, Sloth is an overdose of chamomile. But with this one at the top, you've got chamomile, acai berries, lavender, violet leaf. Those are the top notes. Heart notes, marigold, beeswax, anise, jasmine, cumin. And in the base notes, you've got hay, frankincense, myrrh, mushroom, oak moss, vanilla, and tonka. There's a lot going on here. So much going on here. It's uh, it's just a, like a basically capturing the entire forest of the sloth, this animal, this creature, and putting it in a bottle. So there's a lot of different things happening with different notes. And for me, I get not only a dry experience, but also a a damp experience at the same time. Because for me, chamomile is a very, very dry experience. For me, I have experienced a lot of chamomile tea. I've drank it. And when you're, you know, getting your tea ready, uh, you smell it. I smell it all the time because I always love to smell how things smell. And chamomile tea itself is a very dry experience. So it's interesting because, as I said, this is mostly about chamomile, but it's nicely contrasted with a kind of a damp, fruity experience of the acai berries. Now, I don't really know too much about acai berries, but uh, I, you know, I've had it as a drink a couple times here and there. Uh, it's kind of like a berry-like smell, obviously, but I can't say this smells like 
acai berries. This smells like, you know, blackberries or something like that. There's definitely a fruity touch here, contrasted with that dry chamomile note. But it's not only about the dry chamomile note. Here we also have loads and loads of hay. The hay is so strong here. So in the end, you're experiencing kind of like a, a, a contrasting uh, notes of moisture and dampness with dryness. Lots of dryness. For me, the chamomile is uh, intense, overly intense with the hay. And for me, when I smell chamomile, it reminds me of fall and autumn. I've gone uh, hiking many times in the fall and autumn here in California, where everything is dried up. You can smell the dryness, like the dryness, but then there's also this herbal and aromatic uh, scent or smell in the air. And that's kind of what I get with this one. So it's an overdose of dryness, but you know, when you're going through like this dry forest or dry landscape, you kind of like are creeping up onto like a very damp place because uh, the landscape's gonna change, the environment's gonna change, you're gonna go from dry to moisture. So that's kind of what I get with this fragrance. There's major, major heavy, um, earthiness here and the earthiness a little bit reminds me of a fragrance like sheep mousse from um, Oriza Le Grand because there's a major mushroom note here and that mushroom note kind of takes me into that direction but very very aromatic very very herbal very very dry very very earthy very very grassy but you know, it dries down to a balsamic uh, quality. Uh, there's resins in the base that uh, it kind of pops up, but by the time you get there, they're on the faint side. So in the end, sloth is mostly about the chamomile and the hay note. This is the very, very dry part of this fragrance, but it's nicely contrasted with the mushroom note. And this is where it gets its dampness, its moisture, but throw in a little bit of fruitiness with that acai berry, add some moss, oak moss and some lavender and you have a very very beautifully intense fragrance it's a little different it's a, not necessarily your common fragrances but i like the intensity of this one packs a punch and even though the, the sloth seems like it could be a very very weak animal because it doesn't move so fast uh, the experience is really really ferocious and intense so that's my thoughts on sloth now my thoughts on bat now bat 2015, the original, was a great, great fragrance. It was not my style of fragrance. I felt like it was great for what it accomplished. It was very, very earthy and soil, like it smelled of damp soil, but you had that fruity nuance with the banana in there. So it was a very, very interesting fragrance that I enjoyed for what it is, but it was not something I would wear. This, on the other hand, seems like it's gone in a different direction. It's not necessarily my favorite of the two, but they're both by the same perfumer, as I said. This one has notes of fig, passion fruit, pink guava, and soil accord. In the heart, you've got hay, incense, minerals, night bloom, and jasmine. In the base notes, you've got animalic notes, leather, mossy notes, teak wood, and vetiver. So when I was testing uh, the fragrances, I noticed that sloth is beast mode, and this one actually doesn't get close to how intense it is. But both fragrances are very, very long lasting. But if you want something that stands out, grabs attention, it's sloth. When you want something a little more subdued, not so stand out, then you would go with bat. But again, this is not my favorite style of fragrance. So I personally, I'm not into this kind of fragrance. I don't like to smell like earth. I smell earth all the time. So in the end, it's not for me, but what I like about this one is that you can smell the earth. It also smells like a cave, the bat cave. It smells moist, it smells damp. It smells very earthy and minerally. The soil comes to mind. It's almost like you've been digging the earth and grabbing all the soil. You're gonna move it to another part of your garden or something. You have those kind of smells there, but along the way you've dug up some, uh, you know, roots and, uh, and things that, are, that grow underground that kind of have like fruity nuances and things like that. They do come up. There's also smells of animals and, you know, insects and things like that that you're kind of digging up. You do pick that up here because there's some animalic touches. So everything is kind of like working well together, but it's just not a fragrance I would wear. It's, I mean, I've been testing it out, as I said. It's mostly about the soil, 
all the additional notes that I said, there's animalic notes, very, very light nuances, fruity notes. They're pretty intense when you first spray them, but as the soil tincture or the soil accord takes over, they become less and less. So for me, it smells mostly of uh, soil, earth, you know, dampness, and uh, warm, kind of humid uh, cave. And all those other notes kind of come in very lightly and they don't really take it to like another direction or take it somewhere else. Basically, it stops at the soil accord for me and I have little hints of other notes coming in. So again, the first fragrance, the 2015 version was not my favorite. It's not something I would wear, but I appreciate it for its uh, very, very unique creativity. This one, again, it's not my favorite because I don't wear fragrances like this, but I felt like it's mostly about soil tincture is what I was getting, at least on me. That's what I was experiencing it, but you might experience something completely different. And that's my thoughts on Bat. So in the end, Sloth wins out over Bat, but this is not really a competition. And these are my opinions. You might have a complete other uh, opinion on these fragrances. You might not appreciate Sloth and appreciate Bat 2020. I don't know, but this is how I'm feeling with these two fragrances. I appreciate them for what they are as creations and what the perfumer uh, created uh, for zoologist perfumes. But again, as I said, everyone has different opinions and tastes and things like that. And right now I'm feeling Sloth. Not only do I love the animal, but I love this fragrance as well. Bats, I've never been a fan of. I love Batman though, but th th this fragrance just doesn't do it for me. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Zoologist Sloth and Bat 2020. What are your thoughts? Have you tried these? Are you a fan of uh, Zoologist uh, perfumes, fragrances? Do you enjoy? Which one do you enjoy? If you want to participate in our discovery set or sample set uh, giveaway, one winner, a uh, subscriber of this channel, USA or Europe, uh, subscribers please this is what zoologist uh, is planning on shipping please let me know which animal i always do this one but please let me know which animal you would like to see uh, into a fragrance turned into a fragrance again i also want to mention that this is all over zoologist perfumes website they don't use real animalic notes in any fragrances they're not using anything they're all synthetically created if they do use any animalic notes which is awesome that way so let me know what your favorite animal would be if it was turned into a perfume put down your country as well and let me know what you liked about this video other than that thanks so much for watching today's video if you have any questions or comments please list below please like this video please share it follow me on facebook twitter and instagram and i'll be back with more videos very soon have a good one goodbye